Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast, Digging Deeper with Mandy and Erica. I'm Erica. <laughs> I'm Mandy. And this is a podcast about digging deeper into God's Word, learning it, understanding it, and sharing it with you. That's right, Erica. <laughs> See how we switched there? Okay. Um, yeah, that's what our podcast is about. And if you're new, welcome. Um, today in this podcast, we are continuing in our series worship what is worship so in the first two we talked about what worship was right what we can do and how worship is in spirit and truth we explained what it was to worship in spirit and truth so today we're going to take it a little bit of a step further because a lot of people associate worship with music and there's nothing wrong with that music is an expression of worship but there's a catch here, guys. We all know um, Bethel music, right? And I'm saying this with love to you guys that I don't think we should be singing Bethel music. And we're going to explain why. Mm -hmm. So let's just get into it. Sure. First of all, if we want to explain why Bethel music is why we shouldn't be listening to Bethel music, we first have to look at the church. That's that's like the foundation of everything right there is the church, right? You mean Would Bethel you Church? Yeah. Yeah. Of any church. Well, yeah, you need to know if we're not going to be allowed to sing Bethel music anymore, why? What's yeah. wrong with Bethel? I just want to say one thing to what okay. you said earlier. Um, I just wanted to add on to it about music and worship. Um, I think the problem is that music and worship are not interchangeable. They're not the same thing. You know, in the past two podcasts, we talked about all... We talked all about what worship is according to the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, and music is, a, is one of the ways you can express worship to God. Yeah. But you can't use the terms interchangeably. Right? Explain that a little further. Okay. okay. So, People that's like me, I don't understand what you're saying. Okay. So anyway, worship can be done. Worship, you know, it, if I had to summarize it, I guess I would say it's a lifestyle of sacrifice and obedience to God. Okay. You could express that through music, but it's not limited to music and singing. Yeah. Okay. So I think when people think of worship, they just think of singing. Yeah. Well, I think um, churches have conditioned us to think that way. Yes. Because how many churches have we gone to or how many churches do you go to or even your church what's the first thing you do is you worship and what is that singing well see that's the problem they call that worship and so it gets in people's mind that that is worship that's the only thing that worship is. yes yes and we're gonna today talk about why that's not true um why actually a lot of those modern worship songs are not worship at all they're unbiblical. They're unbiblical, and we get a lot of them from Bethel. So that's how we got to Bethel with this. Yeah. Well, they're they're like the head. They're the ones that started this movement. So that's why we started with them because they started it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I would definitely say they're definitely the most influential. I don't think there's any one Christian who hasn't heard a Bethel song. No. Yeah, they're definitely the most popular. Okay, so let's. Let's talk about, let's just start there, like you said, with Bethel. What, what, give us a little, what is Bethel? Okay, so Bethel is a church out in Redding, California, and they used to be an Assemblies of God church, but then their teachings were maybe so crazy that the Assemblies of God was like, yo, we don't want you in a part of our Assemblies of God anymore. They kicked them out. So what yeah. they did. So now they are a non-denominational church. Okay, well, wait. Hold on one <laughs> second. The Assemblies of God, for those who don't know, is the largest Pentecostal denomination in yes. the world. Is that right? Yeah, they're yeah. a charismatic church. Yes, which just means like they emphasize the work of the Holy Spirit, spiritual gifts, modern day miracles as an everyday part of a believer's life, speaking in tongues, etc., 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 but even Bethel Church to them was too far. Yeah. T too far outside of what they even believed was biblical. Okay, I don't want to overlook the fact that that is kind of crazy, that even the Assemblies of God thought that Bethel's teachings were 
too far out of line that they kicked them out of even their denomination. Right, because the the Assemblies of God is a charismatic church. Mm -hmm. It's the largest Pentecostal denomination in the world. And so they have a lot of leeway in their teachings, I guess. Yeah. Very, uh, very, they heavily emphasize the Holy Spirit, spiritual gifts, speaking in tongues, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, very charismatic. But even to them, Bethel was way too much. Beth, so they're, they're Bethel's like, too much. So they did. They kicked him out. And, I, you know, the whole story is long, long and drawn out and you can look into it for yourself. But, yeah. yeah. Long story short, Bethel had to go. See ya. Peace out. Okay. But why? What exactly is Bethel teaching that is so crazy? So listen, um, Bill Johnson, which is the head pastor, and this Chris Val Valatun, Valatun is the senior pastor. But they don't call themselves pastors. Bill Johnson calls himself an apostle and everybody in his church, his congregation has to refer to him as apostle, as in the office of apostle. And Chris Valentin, he is in the office of prophet. Mm -hmm. So everybody has to call him prophet. Mm -hmm. So they say that they work together, which we know what the duties of an apostle were, what their qualifications were. The Bible tells us, mm -hmm. you know, there's a set list that you have to have had to be an apostle. Mm -hmm. One of them was seeing Jesus. Yeah. How, how did they see Jesus? Right. I want to I want to see Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, for 2000 years, traditional Christianity has taught or we have all agreed that the office of apostle and prophet was something that happened at a certain time to establish Christianity mm -hmm. right after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to get Christianity up and going. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, it's 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 ended. It's not been needed. And there is biblical confirmation in Ephesians 2. It says that um, Christianity is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. I mean, you don't need to keep building a foundation. Once the foundation's laid, you build on top of that. Right. And then it corresponds to the, in Revelation, there's the 12 foundations of heaven that correspond to the 12 apostles. So there's that number again, like there's only 12. Yeah. And we, we saw them in the book of Acts. And when they were, when they're, office or job or duty was completed we didn't need any more apostles or prophets and that's biblical now we have this new movement that's starting and growing rapidly mm -hmm. um in which they're teaching that the offices of apostle and prophet are coming back to christianity and that they're necessary in the Christian church today. And Bethel is really one of the leaders of this movement that you won't really catch them saying that. They won't admit to it. They won't admit to it because it is, it would cause a lot of controversy. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would be like, no way. So they don't really admit to it. But if you just follow their teachings, it's exactly what they're doing. And it's called the New Apostolic Reformation. Mm -hmm. uh, we refer to it as NAR mm -hmm. for short. But that is the main teaching of NAR is that the offices of apostles and prophets are reestablished and necessary for the growth of the Christian church. I, God, th their teaching is that God has new revelations for us outside of the Bible, mm -hmm. new revelations for Christian for Christians everywhere, the global Christian community, and that God will only reveal that through the apostles and prophets. So if you want to be a part of the new big movement of God and what he's doing, you have to submit or come underneath the leadership of an apostle or prophet. Like you just said, Bill Johnson is the apostle. He's not the only one, but he's like the major one. Mm -hmm. And Chris Valaton, second in charge at Bethel, is the prophet. And so they teach that there's going to be a global church one day. This is so funny. This is so funny because in Revelation, it talks about it does a one-world church. It does say that there will be a one-world church. So... <laughs> like, like come on like they're teaching that their teaching is that the global church 
will literally be one global church community, not separated by different denominations. They'll be led by the apostles and prophets, and you'll see signs and wonders and miracles like, like that they won't be, that they will be common everyday occurrences, and that will make earth a better place, good enough for Jesus to come back. And at that time, he will come back then. They say that we prepare the earth for Jesus to come back. That we have to prepare it that, for him okay. to make it perfect. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they, they use this phrase all the time, bringing heaven to earth. Yeah. What they mean is they want earth to look like heaven so that Jesus will be ready to come back and that lead. Just, the, and it's not at all what the Bible teaches. Well, let's go to the Bible and see what it but says. But it is really interesting how that teaching lines up with what the Bible teaches. So I'm not going to read all this, but you should for homework. Revelations 13. You have a beast rising out of the sea. And all this crazy stuff, it's uh, figurative language. Um, but anyway, the beast at the end of the time. So we're going to have this tribulation, and it's called tribulation for a reason because it's going to be torturous and terrible to live in and be a part of. Uh -huh. Okay, it's not going to be fun. No. Not going to be nice. Not going to look like heaven at all. It's going to be the opposite. Opposite. Okay, okay, just for reference, so if you can imagine this, this world right now is ruled by Satan, right? Yeah. Okay. But there's still good in the world. There's still good people that do good things because mm -hmm. we have the Holy Spirit in a lot of people. Before, when the tribulation, the tribulation will start after the rapture, when the Christians go up into their glorified state in heaven with Jesus. Yeah. The Holy Spirit's gone, right? Right. All the Christians gone. No more Holy Spirit. No more good. All of the bad is only left. Crazy, right? Mm -hmm. that's why it's going to be so bad it's only going to last seven years and matthew it says it can't last any longer because no one would be left to to no there would be no survivors if if jesus doesn't come back at that time that's how bad it gets well, isn't there going to be some good people still saved left they'll be saved during the tribulation yeah they can be yes yeah, okay. yes yes so that's why it's not it's going to be hard yes they'll be killed and it'll be awful for them yeah but at least they'll have a chance to still be saved. Anyway. Yeah, but anyway. 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 The Bible in Revelation 13 describes you have the beast. And this will be a one world government controlled by the beast, which is the political leader, so to speak. And he has power given him by the Bible says the dragon. The dragon is Satan. And it mm -hmm. says that. Okay. That, but he's not the only one that's kind of like in charge there's also a second beast. People don't know this. The second beast is the religious leader hmm. of the world religious religion, leader. the one world religion. And he has, this is, I will, I will read this part in Revelation 13, 11. Then I saw another beast. This is the second beast. It's the religious leader, so to speak, mm -hmm. rising out of the earth. It, it had two horns like a lamb and it spoke like a dragon and exercises all the authority of the first beast in its present presence and makes the earth and, and its inhabitants worship the first beast whose mortal wound was healed. Listen, it performs great signs, even making fire come down from heaven to earth in front of the people. And by the signs that it that it is allowed to work in the presence of the beast, it deceives those who dwell on the earth, telling them to make an image of the beast that was wounded by the sword and yet lived. And then it goes on and it gets worse. But here, look at this language. First, I like how the Bible calls the second beast it. <laughs> That's just funny to me. Yeah. But what does it do? It performs great signs. And by the signs, it is allowed to work in the presence of the beast. It deceives all who dwell on the earth. I like it where up the other one that says, um, making fire, fire come down from heaven to earth, bringing heaven to earth. Yeah. Okay. So this is, this is kind of really scary. Mm -hmm. There will be a one world religion like the NAR movement teaches. Yes. They want. A glo they say there will be a global coming together of the Christian church. There will be. There will be. There, they say there will be 
commonplace signs and wonders. There will be. Mm -hmm. They say it's for Jesus, but it won't be. It's all a deception. Yes. Scary, right? Yes. Okay. That's, I, well, how did we get to that? But that's I don't that. Know. <laughs> that's what they teach. That's what they preach. Um, well, that's just part of it. There's a lot more to it that is super unbiblical. They teach that when Jesus lived on the earth, that he set aside his divinity. So, you know, as Christians, Jesus was 100% God. Jesus was 100% man at the same time. Yes. They don't teach that. No. They teach that he was 100% man and only man when he was alive on the earth. Yeah. And they have to do that because they teach that Jesus performed all of his miracles as 100% man. He was the best Christian. He was our role model. He is what we can be if we're born again, if we have the power of the Holy Spirit in us. That is not true. That's not right. Right. I just want to interject real fast and say that I've personally said that Jesus laid his glory aside to come down to earth, meaning that he humbled himself to come down to earth. Not that he laid his God aside, his divinity aside, that he humbled himself to come to earth in human form as God to die for us. Right. That what that I didn't mean, I wanted to clarify this, that I think that he was only man because he wasn't. Right. So I just want to clarify that real fast. Right. So they say that he was only man. And therefore, since he was only man and could perform all these miracles, that we can also perform all these miracles as well. So and then not only that, they have this school. It's um, Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry. BSSM. BSSM for short. And we have Erica bought me this book right here. Um, for Christmas, mm -hmm. it's oh. If you want to know about the NAR movement, right here, this is the book that you want. If you want to borrow it, I'll let you borrow it, but you gotta give it back. But it has everything in there. This this author actually went to this BSSM uh, school. Yeah, the name of that book is Counterfeit Kingdom by Holly Pivick. Yeah, and, and Doug and Doug Guyvet. I think that's it. Douglas yeah. Skyvet. Yeah. And they talk about this school. So it's an institute of higher learning, uh, college age for college students. And I think they have, what, 2,000 students a year. Yeah. Keep that in mind. Because at the end of each year graduating class, you have 2,000 of these people exiting the school and going into the community around the world. Yeah. Scary. It is scary. And... She actually went to this school. Where are we at here? They call themselves Hogwarts for Christians. They they actually say that they're Hogwarts. Basically. Do they call themselves? Yeah, Hog they do. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. Like, why would you? <sighs> okay. Um, right here. Um, this is an article about Bethel Church. Uh, the opening sentences of a BuzzFeed. It is the first day of Prophecy Week at the Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry, or as students here like to call the place, Christian Hogwarts. Wow. Okay. Why would you want to be associated with that? There. And if you don't know, what I I I I don't even know where to get started here because this is just. Okay, what is Hogwarts? It's witchcraft, right? Yes. Yes. Why would you want to be associated with that? And we're not we're not just saying, oh, this is witchcraft. Just read some of the things that they teach at this school that they have these kids doing. And call they they have them doing cult practices, witchcraft things. They just they just cover it with Christian terms like Jesus and God and prayer and miracle. But the practices themselves are cult like. Right. Okay, one of the classes here is called Prophesying 101. And uh, they have volunteers that go out publicly and prophesy over people in the public. See, that's the thing. They're stealing the word prophesy from Christianity. But what they're really doing is fortune telling. Right. And, and let me explain why we say that. Psychic fairs and spiritual readings. They go to these psychic fairs. And instead of saying spirit readings, with which are tarot cards, they have 
prophetic words. Well, I do have tarot cards. They do, but they call them... Let me find that. Destiny cards. Destiny cards. They call them destiny cards instead of tarot cards. But <laughs> they work the same way that tarot cards work. They just say they're Christian tarot cards. Well, that's ridiculous. Right. The, she says it right here. At these psychic events, <clears throat> many BSSM students have used Christianized versions of tarot cards called destiny cards to aid in their readings. Tarot cards. Tarot cards are decks of cards used for used by fortune tellers to seek hidden knowledge about a person's past, present, or future. They are a tool for divination. Mm. Destiny cards designed by a Christian organization named Christ, Christ Alignment. Alignment have been likened to tarot cards by team leaders at Christ Alignment. The card images of angels, animals, and nature scenes are produced by prophetic artists and photographers. That's enough for me to read. That just makes me mad. Yeah, so they a tarot card is a tarot card, and it's evil, and it's from... It's demonic. It is. It's evil, and it's demonic. And their idea of prophesying to people is almost like to channel God to get a new revelation for somebody's life. Okay, you cannot channel God. No. You cannot zone out of your mind and, and go right up into God and hear what he's saying about someone, which is exactly what they're teaching these kids to do at this school. Mm -hmm. In fact, you can, right now, if you want to go and get a, a reading for yourself from God, you want to hear what God has to say to you right now, you can pay Bethel virtually to take a Zozo, Zozo. healing. Yeah. And they will, they'll put someone up on the screen and they'll channel God and what he has to say and speak over your life right now. Yeah, of like what past traumas happened. Yes, what, yes. Why that happened, how to help it. Right, and it's all fake. You can't, that's not how Christianity works. You can't do things like that. But they're teaching the kids there to do that. Yeah. And here's another thing that they teach about this so-called pro prophesying over people. It's only good stuff. Yeah. And they teach that if you get if you hear something from God that's negative about someone's life or a rebuke or a reprove or a correction or a calling out sin, you're wrong. That's yep. not from God. You're only to speak encouraging words. Well, again, come on now. That's so made up. But it gets even crazier than that. They do grave soaking. Oh yeah. If you don't know what grave soaking is, it's where like a an older spiritual leader had died and there's still supernatural power that's in their grave. So they go and they either lay on their tombstone or on the grave and soak up their supernatural powers. Yes. Yeah. How demonic is I that? I know. They, they, they say that there's a residual anointing left on the physical bones in the ground. And if they can just lay and roll over these tombs, they can soak up some of that anointing. And then they're, they're, they claim to be on a communication level with the angelic realm. They can communicate with angels. They, they can yeah. call on angels to answer them. They bump I mean, into angels. It's crazy stuff. This is nowhere do you find this in the Bible, but you do find this in witchcraft. This is things that they do. I want to show one video. We're going to show you guys a video. This is a... Um, it's a famous video that's out there and this is a Bethel mm, Bethel student and there's a couple of students in the video and they had just left the conference maybe it was a Benny Hinn conference I, I can't remember but there's a street evangelist pre preaching on the street to people and the the students come up to him and they have this exchange he asks them what is the gospel mm. what is the basic foundational gospel of Christianity and these students have no idea no idea. All they want to do is just focus on miracles, signs, and wonders, and healings. But anyway, it's crazy. L l watch for yourself. She's the one I was talking about. This is right here. This okay. guy yeah. is the street guy. And he's just trying to ask her a simple question about the gospel. What is what is it basically the gospel teach? And she has she's just crazy. Well, and that, that means he took on the satanic nature of his own and became sin, as in like he was sin instead of bearing sin. Would you agree with that statement? 
The Bible says that man here's a little became sin for Benny, us. Benny Hinn says that that Jesus had to suffer in hell for three days Do you believe there's at the hands of Satan in order to pay for your sins. Do you believe Jesus paid for your sin suffering in hell? Yeah. Do you, believe, you do believe that? Yeah. Do you believe that he went to hell and suffered? No, no, no. No, he went to hell to take the kids. Sir, you and I are on the same page. Okay, then why are you judging what he's doing? I'm not judging. That's God's job. I am doing, it's God I'm doing what the Bible says. If which is to mark those that call the What you're doing is you're trying to detract people from hearing the word of God. No, sir. I'm trying to save people from a deceptive man who will lie to them and try to shipwreck them. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 to 15. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. No wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. Therefore, it is not surprising if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness, whose end will be according to their deeds. What church do you go to? Matthew. We don't have to worry about theology. You can't separate Jesus from theology. You can't separate the love of God from theology. Theology is how we get to the love of God. You can't separate them. No, oh, I feel like I'm in my own hit the bar episode. <laughs> seven. We all go to different churches. Sir. Let's just Matthew be seven, fifteen to sixteen. Or people talk to us. Beware of like the me. false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, Thank but inwardly are ravenous we wolves. Can all get along. You will know them by their fruits. <laughs> Grapes are not and gathered from bushes, nor you. figs no from thorns, what are they? What's your name? No matter what we believe, we're perfectly loved. Listen, this is crazy. Does that sound this like something the Bible says? No, not at all. They're, they're so uncomfortable hearing scripture actually be read. They don't know how to respond to it. I also want to say that one thing that... Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry teaches is that holy laughter. Mm -hmm. When you're so filled up with the Holy Spirit, you just laugh uncontrollably. Again, not biblical, but it doesn't surprise me that she's just trying to laugh like that over top of what he's saying. And can I just add that uh, God is a God of order? Yes. And yes. he is in control. Mm -hmm. And anything that's actually spiritual from God is in control. Mm-hmm. Mm you're not out of control ever within God. Mm -hmm. Okay, we might skip ahead to where um, she starts talking. Oh, can I ask you a question? <laughs> no, wait, I want to ask you a question. Are you a, are you a soul winner? <laughs> can I ask you a question? Yeah. <laughs> That's a setup uh, question. I'm a perfect person. You just made her perfect. Huh. So weird. Hello, are you in there? Are you in there? Can I ask you a question? What are you What are you doing this for? What, 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 because I, I'm a Bible believing Christian, and the, the Bible says that we're going to mark those who are false and teach something other than what was first received. And we are supposed to to point them out to others. Okay, so I'm sure you do this a lot, right? Never, sir. I've done it. I've done it twice before with a couple of other. Are you making any progress? Are you Are you saving souls by doing this? The Lord knows. You're wasting your time, bro. Are you, That's what are you're you doing. Christian, sir? Of course I'm a Christian. How you say? What? How you say? Let's all preach the Please. love of God together in communion. We're all made one in Him. We're all love no matter what theology we're, we believe. Oh. <laughs> we're all loved no matter what we always do. So God's filled with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Uh, we're loved yeah, perfectly no matter what we believe. No matter what. So you're, Every you're a universalist? Person Every person does the heaven? is perfectly loved by God. Every person does the heaven? Love. I don't know. I can't claim to know what happens after we die. Of course not. Sinners don't go to heaven. God. Is God loved? Is God loved? Does God, does God send is people to hell who he perfectly loves? No, you send Should yourself. we be worried about hell yeah, or heaven? Yeah. <laughs> we should. <laughs> Jesus God's did everything for me so that I can go to with him forever. <laughs> and it's the most you ever heard joyful, the biblical, satisfying You ever heard the verses that talk about people who stand before God? Oh, I can't wait to say, stand before God. God. Oh. And they say, no, Lord, Lord, didn't we? Do you hear that guy just making that noise in the background? Mm -hmm. That is, um, oh, uh, that's demonic. It's just that, that is not being spirit filled to just m mutter syllables like that uncontrollably. This is what you see sometimes in Eastern religions mm -hmm. when, when they have the false 
false spirits in them, demonic spirits, s demonic spirits. Yeah, I said it right. We <laughs> do all these miracle things in your yeah. name. Yeah. And you know what Jesus said and to him? And in your name, cast out demons. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what Jesus said to him? Yeah, I never knew you. But, you <laughs> but we that... don't do it out of works. We do it out of love. We do it out of knowing him. He releases his power. And I know I can say, I do. <laughs> And everyone should be able to see that. So let me ask you, because I'm curious. Let's say I walked up to you. I had a nice stick in my life. I have five minutes to live. Yeah. And I know that when you laugh and all that, you're obviously a good Christian. So she would pull the knife out of your back and heal it right now. Uh, right now. About, about what would I would say. <laughs> what would you say? What would happen to what? No, I said I have five minutes to live. And you're, you're a Christian. And I'm worried about how I live. What would you tell I would me? say, God, heal right now. Yeah. <laughs> heal and the sword would fall. <laughs> Fine, and then we'd hug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, that was a prophecy. Yeah, I, have to <laughs> I, I have to tell you something. Whoa, 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 whoa. You guys can take it. You guys just take it for what you want. I'm just for the Why? Oh, no. What's wrong with the joy of the Lord? What's wrong with the joy? What's wrong with the joy? Christian, has to, Christian does not say it doesn't matter what you believe, sir. Do you believe that Jesus is the only way to answer your God? Did Jesus walk around he telling revealed. people to accept him? He was no. the only one. He's the he image of the invisible up? God who shows you us who God You said it doesn't matter what we believe. It doesn't matter if we think we believe in Jesus. He loves all of us perfectly and we can step into that so, wonderful so love. So if somebody loves a guy named Sam instead of Jesus, that, that's okay. I hope so, that he loves Sam and Andrew and Ben and me and everyone. But I mean, it's God. <laughs> Instead of Jesus, he loves, he loves, he loves Sam. Are you okay with that? God loves love. I think God would God be loves excited him. about him. God loving. loves him anyway. He loves He's love. He's accepted. He's so accepted. And I'm not trying to be You're mean. You're accepted I'm to too. To <laughs> I'm a gospel preacher. I go to the street. And let people mock me all the time, okay? We definitely let Jesus I'm a, in I don't, anyway. I don't want money. I'm not trying to get you to join the church. Yeah. What makes I you question care. whether... Because, oh, because wow. young lady, you talk, don't talk about Do you have any idea who Jesus is? Do you think God knows who I am perfectly? Do you think God knows who I am perfectly? He gives me the most satisfying joy and yeah. love right. I've you, ever your experienced. Religion, your religion it. is a religion of experience. You come here to get the, the little shivers and the ha-ha-ha. Oh, I get that at home. You don't really care about the Bible, right? So if you don't know, that was a, a healing service from Benny Hinn. Benny Hinn is a faith healer. Mm -hmm. And him, Bill Johnson, Bethel, um, what's his name? Crazy, Crazy Eyes. Crazy Eyes. <laughs> uh, uh, Kenneth, Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland. Todd White, they're yeah. all faith healers. Yeah. They're all in this movement together. They emphasize, as you can clearly see by the fruit of what's being produced there, they emphasize miracles, healings, and all of that. Uh, but but the, the real gospel is not there. Mm -mm. Truth is not there. These kids, these poor kids don't even know the gospel message. They no. don't know Jesus. They think they know, but they have no clue. And that guy did a good job, that street preacher guy. Mm -hmm. Good for him. He was trying his best. And I hope that someday those kids get it. So my question is, mm -hmm. if these people are all faith healers, how's come there's not a flock of people out there waiting to get healed? Because when Jesus was alive and he was performing miracles and he was healing people, there was crowds crowds flocking around him just to touch his hem to heal them mm -hmm. i mean that's that's such a good point you know if there was a guy who just could touch and heal somebody the news would be all over that national news mm -hmm. which one of us in all honesty right now doesn't know someone we would drag there and have them healed yeah from covid from cancer from their illness and their ailments I just want to make this clear. We are not saying that God doesn't heal because we believe God will still heal who he wills to heal. We can't command God to heal. Mm -hmm. Who gave us the power to command God to do something? I can't believe that 
Uh, yeah, I can't believe it. I mean, you could see that girl. She, he said, what would you do if that guy had a knife sticking out of his back? He was about to die. And what'd she say? I'd heal him. How? How, though? Yeah, she'd say, be healed and be well. And they'd love, love Jesus from that. That just doesn't even make sense. That's really me. sad. These people don't know about God or his will or anything like that. That hurts my soul. And I can only imagine <clears throat> how it breaks God's heart. Yeah. Okay, so why does all this matter? Why are we talking about Bethel right now and healings and all of that when we're supposed to be talking about worship? <laughs> True. Because they are using worship music as the Trojan horse in Christian churches today to get their teachings in the door. Tune in next week, guys, as we explain what Bill Johnson's quote that he uses music as a Trojan horse and what that is actually meaning. And as always, thanks for watching, listening, like, subscribe, comment, and share. Thanks, guys.